So um, welcome everyone to Health for the World International Grand Rounds. We are honored to have our, our Grand Round speaker today. Our uh, Grand Round speaker is Dr. Monica Majumdar Shape. Dr. Monica Shape is Chief of Breast Imaging at NYU Winthrop Hospital and is also Associate Professor of Radiology. Dr. Shape has extensive experience in breast imaging education and is a leading breast imaging educator. We are really honored to have her give this talk on an important topic today, which is the imaging workup of palpable breast masses. Thank you so much, Dr. Shade, for doing this for us. And you can start whenever you're ready. Thank you. Thank you for that nice uh, introduction. And um, thank you for joining me if it is morning or evening or afternoon. Um, I am looking forward to working together this next hour and to provide some clarity on a topic that is near and dear to my heart, which is the workup of palpable breast masses. So let's get started. So why is this topic important? So palpable breast masses is one of the most common presenting signs of breast cancer. And when somebody presents with a palpable cancer, it is more aggressive than non-palpable cancers that are seen on screening mammography. So we need to be prudent in the workup that we do. The good news is that most uh, masses that present as a palpable finding are benign. But either way, we need to make sure that we do the appropriate workup um, to do what is best for the patient. So today we're gonna dive into that topic. So there are three learning objectives from the talk today. The first is to understand the appropriate imaging sequence used to evaluate palpable breast masses. The second is to determine the appropriate imaging follow-up and management. And third, to understand when biopsy under palpation is warranted. So whenever we have a patient that comes in with a palpable breast abnormality, it's important to understand their history and what's going on. So make sure you ask these questions. You wanna know when they first notice the area of palpable concern, um, has it fluctuated over time? That means, has it gotten bigger? Has it gotten smaller? Um, does it get bigger and smaller? Does it come and go? Is it associated with their menstrual cycle if they're female? Have they had any recent trauma? Do they have any nipple discharge or pain, fever, erythema? What is their family history of breast cancer? Do they have a personal history of breast cancer? And also, do they have any other risk or genetic mutations that would make them predisposed to breast cancers? So those um, are important questions to ask so you can understand what your clinical suspicion is going to be in these patients. So not only is getting a history important, but also doing a clinical exam. So you should know what you're looking for when you examine these patients. So um, when you're doing an exam, you're going to be more concerned for malignancy if the mass is firm, if it's hard, if it's immobile, if it's fixed, so it may be fixed to the fascia or the skin, it may cause dimpling of the skin or retraction of the nipple. So look for those signs. And also it has indistinct margins. Lesions that are usually benign um, that are palpable have um, mobile features. They, so they move around easily, they have well-defined margins and they're soft and rubbery in texture. But you should also know that when you're doing a breast exam, you cannot tell by palpation if something is a cyst but it may be helpful uh, to identify normal structures such as a prominent rib or costochondral junction um, or maybe even a ridge of tissue that may be causing um, issues for the patient. Again, you're gonna put that information from the physical exam together with the imaging findings to determine what's best for the patient. So now that we know the questions to ask and what to look for on exam, let's start out with the first initial imaging exam should be if somebody presents for, with a palpable breast finding. And this is gonna depend on the gender of the patient and the age. So if you have a female that comes in and they're young, they're less than 30 years old, you wanna start with the ultrasound. If they are 40 and above, you start with a mammogram. If they are in between, it's really at the discretion of the referring clinician and the, or the radiologist whether you're gonna start with an ultrasound or mammogram, again, you're gonna take the clinical suspicion and the patient's history into account. If you have a male patient that's coming in with a palpable abnormality, you start with the ultrasound if they're less than 25, and you start with a mammogram if they're 25 and above. So I know you're looking at the chart thinking, this seems pretty easy. Why would there be um, confusion when you're trying to work up these patients? And the confusion actually stems from what you see or what you don't see on the initial imaging studies. And hopefully you're gonna have some more clarity on that as we move through this presentation. And we're gonna do this in a case-based format. You can put answers in the Q&A section of what you're thinking to the questions I ask. Um, 
or you can just write it down on a piece of paper. But I do think it's important for you to commit to an answer and think about it so we can um, dive into the thought process and how these patients are worked up. So let's start out with our first group, and that is women that are less than 30. So our first question is, we have a 28-year-old female that has a palpable abnormality in the right breast. What is the most appropriate initial imaging test? Are you gonna get a right breast mammogram? Are you gonna get a bilateral mammogram, a right breast ultrasound, or a bilateral ultrasound? So you can go ahead and use the Q&A box. I'm not able to see the chat function. Um, I'm gonna give everybody 10 seconds. Let me just watch the time. And then we'll discuss. Okay, so I have answers D for bilateral ultrasound and C, D. Okay, so you guys are on the right track. So we are gonna start with an ultrasound that is correct. The patient is young, they likely have dense breasts. So we do a targeted ultrasound. So the answer is gonna be C, a right breast targeted ultrasound. So let's see our findings. So now we have the ultrasound. Um, we've taken an image in the area of palpable concern. Are you going to offer A, reassurance, B, recommend an ultrasound, C, recommend a biopsy, or D, recommend that the patient gets MRI? Go ahead and start putting your answers in. Okay. So I'm getting a lot of A's, a few C's. So let's go over this case and the findings. So we do an ultrasound. This is a superficial finding. This is the skin. We have a hypochoic to anechoic mass, increased through transmission, and you see this tiny tail going to the skin. So this is a dermal sinus tract. This is pathognomonic for a sebaceous cyst, which is a benign BIRADS2 finding. You're gonna offer reassurance to the patient and tell them to um, do clinical follow-up, okay? Next case. So this is our next case. Again, 28 year old, we have the ultrasound findings below. So this is different from our first case, right? So I want you to look at patient number one and patient number two. Think about what is the difference in what you're seeing in the tissue pattern and what are your findings? What are you gonna recommend for patient number one? Are we done? Um, are you gonna recommend uh, getting a mammogram? What are you gonna do for patient number two? It's harder because I don't have multiple choice. So let, uh, let's go to the next slide and talk about it. Well, first let's go over the findings. So patient one, you see uh, these are hypochoic fat lobules. So in breast fat is hypochoic and glandular tissue is echogenic. So patient one has fatty breast tissue. Patient two um, has glandular tissue. She has a dense uh, breast tissue pattern. So our next step in management it's actually a trick question because it's gonna depend on your level of suspicion. If patient one has fatty breast tissue and a low um, clinical suspicion on exam, you're gonna go ahead and offer reassurance. It's gonna be a BIRADS one. She can follow up with her doctor. Patient two, however, has dense breast tissue. If they have dense breast and they have high suspicion on clinical exam, you're gonna go ahead and recommend getting a mammogram, right? So we wanna see if there are any microcalcifications or subtle distortion um, on mammogram, which aren't easily seen on ultrasound. Now we have another patient. So this is a 28 year old, again, has an ultrasound um, in the area of palpable concern, which shows the following finding. Tell me if you would recommend A, a biopsy, B, a bilateral mammogram, C, a unilateral mammogram, D, short-term follow-up, or an MRI. So I'm getting answers for A and B, one for C, couple for C, and one for E. Okay, so we have a variety of answers here, and that's good. Let's go over each of the answer uh, choices um, to go through this, because this is actually a semi-trick question. So the answer is biopsy or bilateral mammogram. And it's really gonna depend on the person who's reading the study. So the radiologist, um, 
that's doing it. So some just go ahead and opt for biopsy because young women have very dense breasts and sometimes the mammogram does not add additional information. Others like myself like to get a bilateral mammogram because I wanna make sure nothing else is going on in the breast tissue. If this is the only area that we're concerned about, then I know that's the only biopsy that we need to do. But if we get a mammogram and there are calcifications or distortion in another spot, I need to determine which biopsies need to be performed that are going to guide the patient's management. Okay, so I'm, I am more toward the side of doing a bilateral mammogram. So um, we do not get a unilateral mammogram because the patient has not had a mammogram before. So we go ahead and do a bilateral study so we can compare both of the breast tissues and see what's going on. Short-term follow-up uh, would not be indicated because the finding on ultrasound is an irregular hypocoic shadowing mass. So those are ultrasound features that are highly suspicious. And MRI is not um, the way to go in this case because MRI has little utility in the workup of palpable breast masses. Um, mammogram and ultrasound um, are, are very good methods to evaluate what's going on. So in this case, we need to do the mammogram workup, see if there's anything else that needs to be biopsied and go ahead and do the biopsy, okay? So let's go through this algorithm. So if we have somebody that's less than 30 that has a focal palpable area finding, uh, finding we're gonna do an ultrasound. If we have a specific benign finding, such as our first case of a sebaceous cyst, you may even have a cyst or a lymph node in cases, you give that a BIRADS2 and the patient is done. If the ultrasound is negative and it is fatty and you have a low clinical suspicion, it's a BIRADS1 and the patient just has to have clinical follow-up. If, however, the tissue is dense and you have a high clinical suspicion, they need to get a mammogram. If the ultrasound shows a probably benign finding, on ultrasound, um, you can either get a follow-up in six months or do a core biopsy. And it's going to depend on your level of suspicion and the patient's history. If you have a suspicious finding on ultrasound or malignancy, go ahead and get that mammogram or move directly to a core biopsy. We have to see what's going on in that case. So let's move to our next group of patients. And those are women that are greater than 40, that are 40 and above. So we have a 52-year-old female that presents with a left breast lump. She had a screening mammogram eight months ago that was negative. What is the most appropriate initial imaging test? If you can go ahead and put your answers in. I see some. Okay, so um, getting a lot of answers here, and we have a little bit of every answer choice. So why don't we go through this question? So this person is 52. They've just had, they had a screening mammogram eight months ago, and it was normal. Um, in these situations, you're gonna, since it's been over six months, you're gonna wanna start with a mammogram. In this case, it will be a unilateral mammogram um, on the left side. Some places will start with a bilateral if it's after six months. I just do the left breast. Um, and let me go over why. So um, the reason that I don't have one answer is it's gonna depend on when the last bilateral mammogram was. So in less than six months, you can do an ultrasound or a unilateral mammogram. So if the person had their screening mammogram a month ago and has a new palpable abnormality, you could go ahead and start with an ultrasound. If it's closer to the six month mark, you can go ahead and get a unilateral mammogram. If it's six months or above, you can start with a unilateral mammogram. If it's close to the time of their annual uh, screening uh, to be done, go ahead and get the bilateral study, okay? And if somebody has not had a mammogram before, even if they're 52, you're gonna wanna start with a bilateral mammogram. And let's go over mammogram technique. So if somebody comes in with a palpable, there are a few things that you need to make sure um, that is done during the imaging. And that is one is placing a dermal palpable marker. In this case, we have a triangular palpable marker. Um, this is the most common marker used for palpable findings. Some places also use a uh, round circular BB. You wanna go ahead and do your standard views, the CC and MLO views. If you have tomosynthesis, go ahead and use tomosynthesis. Um, depending, if you don't have tomosynthesis, you may need to get spot compression views or spot magnification views. So let's look at these two patients. So again, 52-year-old that has a palpable abnormality 
and the left breast. What is your next step in management? Let's start with patient one. Tell me if you're gonna provide reassurance, recommend ultrasound, do a biopsy, or recommend an MRI. So, let me see, I'm getting some answers here. Quite a few for A, offering reassurance. We have some C, we have some recommending ultrasound. One for MRI. Okay, somebody has already answered both questions, so let's, let's go ahead and discuss this question, okay? So let's start with patient one. So patient one, you see the triangular marker in the medial aspect of the breast, okay? And underneath the palpable marker, you have fatty tissue. There really isn't anything there. Um, you can offer this patient reassurance. You can offer this patient reassurance, BIRADS one, everything is negative. Some people like to get an ultrasound, just re-identify the fat that's there, that's fine. Ultrasound's negative, this is a BIRADS one, offer reassurance, everything is normal. And let's go over um, the importance of having that negative mammogram and ultrasound. So if you have a patient that the mammogram and ultrasound are negative, and you have a low clinical suspicion, the negative predictive value of both of those exams is 97 to 100%. You can reassure those patients that everything is fine, they can just follow up with their clinician, everything is normal on imaging. But if you have anyone that has a high clinical suspicion, uh, biopsy should be performed under palpation even if there's no finding on imaging. So I just want to stress that. If your mammogram and ultrasound are negative, and you have a low clinical suspicion, you are done. The patient, um, it's a very high negative predictive value that nothing is going on. But if you have negative imaging or um, imaging that just shows benign findings and your clinical suspicion is high, the patient needs to obtain biopsy under palpation. So you're gonna refer them to a surgeon. Let's look at patient number two. I know some people already um, answered this, but let me know what you think about patient number two. Are you going to reassure them? Are you going to recommend that they get an ultrasound? Are you going to recommend a biopsy? Um, or are you gonna recommend an MRI? Again, this is the next step in their management. They have presented for the diagnostic mammogram. What is your next step? So I have some varied answers for A, a D, C, B, One has a B with an explanation point. So I'm glad you guys are all thinking about this and, and trying to determine what to do next. So let's look at patient number two, okay? So this patient has heterogeneously dense breast, right? This is the BB that was used as a palpable marker instead of the triangle, as in the prior case. And underneath this is you see um, a, a dense mass. Okay, so we need to figure out what this mass is. Is it a cyst? Is it something solid? And what we're gonna use to do that is to do an ultrasound. So this patient had an ultrasound done and this shows a complex cystic mass. A complex cystic mass is something that is solid and cystic. So we have a solid component here and then we have fluid, the cystic component with a fluid fluid level, right? We see the uh, straight line where the uh, debris filled fluid is um, going dependently. So this is a complex cystic mass. This is a suspicious finding. We would recommend biopsy. This came back as a cancer. I also want to take this time to go over the ultrasound technique when you have somebody that comes in with a palpable finding. Again, obtain history again when you're there with a patient. You can uh, reiterate what the technologist has told you, but go ahead and ask again, ask um, additional questions. Uh, it will uh, offer more insight to you. There's also something that I like to do when I'm in the room with the patient. I ask them, I say, can you point with one finger to the area that you're feeling? And I have them use that one finger, point to the area that they're feeling. I examine the breast at that location. I wanna make sure that I can feel what the patient is feeling. And I will put the ultrasound transducer directly over that spot and take an image. And this is critical because you want to make sure 
that you are able to uh, correlate the imaging findings with the physical exam. So you wanna make sure that you are actually imaging the area of palpable concern. And I found this technique to be very useful during my career. So let's go to our next case. So we have a 52 year old female that has a suspicious palpable abnormality in the right breast. And the mammogram has dense breast tissue that, so the mammogram that was performed today has dense breast tissue and it's stable. What is the next best step in patient management? Are you going to recommend short-term follow-up, clinical management, an ultrasound, or MRI? So let me get to our new answers. Go ahead and type your answers in. Okay, I see. A lot of C's. I see some recommending short-term follow-up. Um, uh, one saying clinical management, or a few saying clinical management, some giving multiple answers. So let's go ahead and dive into this question. So again, we have somebody over 40. We went ahead, we did the mammogram. Everything looks late, stable, but she has dense parenchyma but she has a suspicious abnormality. So what we need to do, even though the mammogram does not look like it's changed, she has dense breast tissue, we do not know what's hiding underneath, we need to get an ultrasound. So let's get the ultrasound. The ultrasound showed an irregular hypoechoic mass. This was biopsied and it was an invasive ductal cancer. Okay, so the teaching point here is even if the tissue pattern on the mammogram looks stable, Unless the tissue is completely fatty and there, you can see that there is nothing underlying the palpable marker, you need to get an ultrasound. You don't know what's hiding underneath the dense breast parenchyma and ultrasound um, is a very strong um, clinical tool to use uh, to further evaluate the breast tissue. So let's go over this algorithm. I know it's super busy, but I just wanna go through each one of these and hopefully it's going to stick and make sense. So, over 40, 40 and above, we're gonna start with a mammogram. If we see a specific benign finding, so a mammogram you may see an oil cyst, which is benign, or maybe a lymph node or degenerating fibroadenoma, that's completely benign. Um, that does not need further imaging workup. You can give it a BIRADS too. If you do the mammogram and you see fatty tissue in the area of palpable concern, um, you don't need to do any additional imaging evaluation, that is a BIRADS-1. If, however, the mammogram is negative and it's dense, we need to get an ultrasound to see underneath that dense tissue. We need to see if there's anything hiding, okay? If your mammogram is suspicious, you need to get an ultrasound, and that's really to help for biopsy planning. So if you have a mammogram that's suspicious, you get an ultrasound, um, you don't see a correlate, you're gonna biopsy that under stereotactic guidance. So you're gonna use your mammogram images to guide you, okay? Uh, if you see something suspicious on your mammogram, but the ultrasound itself is suspicious, you're gonna go ahead and do the biopsy under ultrasound because that is more comfortable for the patient, okay? So these are the, the criteria to keep in mind. This is an additional subcategory of what to do depending on your findings on ultrasound if somebody was negative and dense. So let's go to our next group. So this is going to be women that are in the gray zone, 30 to 39. You can start either with ultrasound or mammogram. So we have a 32-year-old female has a left breast area of palpable concern, and she presents for ultrasound. What is the most appropriate next step in patient management? Are we going to get a biopsy, a bilateral mammogram, a left breast mammogram, are we gonna recommend short-term follow-up, so we think it's probably benign, or recommend getting an MRI? You can go ahead and start putting in your answers. Okay, so most of the answers are um, A, B. I actually have a little bit of everything. So let's look at this, because I know the workup can be confusing and that's why we're going over it. 
So we have somebody over 30, 30 that started with the ultrasound. The finding on ultrasound is really indeterminate. We have this hypocoic shadowing mass. We don't have good margins. We're gonna recommend a bilateral mammogram. And the reason it's bilateral is because they haven't had a mammogram before. We wanna see um, the symmetry of the breast, the tissue pattern of the breast, and see what's going on on both sides. So we're gonna start with a bilateral mammogram. And again, this is gonna be different from um, what we discussed with patients that are uh, below 30, right? So if you had something suspicious on ultrasound, you could do a biopsy or a mammogram next. Again, I always opt for mammogram. This is somebody that's over than 30, older than 30, that has a suspicious finding on ultrasound. Go ahead and get the bilateral mammogram. We want to make sure there aren't any suspicious calcifications or distortions, things like that, that are not well evaluated on ultrasound that we can see on mammogram. So this patient had a bilateral mammogram. This is the right breast, this is the left breast. In the inner left breast, in the area of palpable concern, you can see that there are heterogeneous calcifications. Um, there's a BB that's marking that this is the area of palpable concern. So that corresponds to the imaging. A spot magnification view was performed. What do you wanna do in this patient? Are you gonna recommend short-term follow-up, getting a stereotactic biopsy, getting an ultrasound biopsy or an MRI. Go ahead and put your answers in. Okay, you guys are going along the right path here. We have a lot of Bs and Cs, um, which is fantastic. So you do understand the importance of biopsying this finding because it is suspicious. Let me go over how we would biopsy this, right? So this is a finding that we see well on mammogram and ultrasound, okay? This patient is also 32, so she is young. We can go ahead and biopsy this under ultrasound because we see it well. Um, it's a more comfortable biopsy for the patient and, we, um, and there's no radiation, right? A stereotactic biopsy would have radiation. Um, if we did not see this on ultrasound, stereotactic biopsy would be the way to go, but we do see this well, so the biopsy should be performed under ultrasound guidance. Again, it's more comfortable for the pa patient and there's less radiation. So when we look um, at this age group, so women 30 to 39 that have a focal palpable abnormality. Again, depends on the clinician, depends on the radiologist, whether you start with the ultrasound or mammogram, but I want you to follow the algorithms for patients that are less than 30. If you start with ultrasound, the only caveat being, if you see a suspicious finding on ultrasound, in these patients that are above 30, go ahead and get that bilateral mammogram. Let's make sure nothing else is going on, okay? If you start with a mammogram, um, follow the algorithm for patients that are above 40, okay? So depending on what you find on mammogram, you're gonna determine whether you need an ultrasound and then determine the next steps in management. Okay, now we have um, a special case scenario. So if we have women that are pregnant and lactating, um, no matter what their age is, we need to understand how we should start their imaging workup if they have a palpable finding. So let's start with a 41-year-old postpartum patient that has a right breast palpable abnormality. She's currently breastfeeding. How would you like to evaluate the patient initially? Are you going to get a mammogram of the right side? Are you gonna get a bilateral mammogram? Are you gonna get a right breast ultrasound or a bilateral ultrasound? You guys are doing fantastic. I see a lot of C's and some D's. That is fantastic. So let's go over this case, okay? So this person just had a baby, she's breastfeeding. The breasts are engorged, there's lots of glandular tissue. It makes evaluation with mammography not the best. So our initial imaging test in a somebody that is pregnant or breastfeeding is going to be an ultrasound. And given how busy her breasts are gonna be because she's breastfeeding, we are gonna target it to the area of palpable concern. So we're gonna do a right breast ultrasound in this patient, okay? So I want you to remember, that ultrasound 
is the first modality to investigate somebody that is pregnant with a palpable finding or somebody that is lactating, okay? So use ultrasound first. So let's go over a few things. The good news is that most of the palpable masses in pregnancy or when somebody is breastfeeding are benign. You wanna do a targeted ultrasound as the primary imaging study. It's a 100% sensitivity for gestational breast cancer, okay? Mammogram, however, is not contraindicated. The radiation dose is minimal with, a neg with negligible risk to the fetus. You can always uh, put a lead shield on the patient to reduce that risk even more. And you should perform a mammogram, and it should be bilateral, if you are suspicious for malignancy. So let me repeat that. We're gonna start with ultrasound, right? It's very sensitive in patients that are breastfeeding and pregnant. The radiation dose is minimal, and there is minimal, minimal, minimal risk to the fetus. Use a lead shield. But if you suspect that there is a malignancy on ultrasound, go ahead and get that bilateral mammogram. Okay, so our last uh, group that we're gonna discuss today are males with palpable breast findings. So here, we have a 28-year-old male that presents with a palpable breast abnormality. What is the most appropriate initial imaging exam? Are you going to get a right breast ultrasound, a bilateral ultrasound, a right breast mammogram, or a bilateral mammogram? Go ahead and put your answers in. Okay, so we have a lot of A's and D's. So this is a male patient. They are over 25, through 25 and over. We're going to start with a bilateral mammogram, okay? So start with a bilateral mammogram. Let's go over this patient, uh, patient one and two. So these are two male breast patients, um, two male patients that came in with palpable abnormalities. We have patient one and patient two. Let's start out with, um, go ahead and put patient one and two for your answers. Let me know if you are going to provide reassurance, recommend an ultrasound, recommend going directly to biopsy, or recommend getting an MRI in these patients. Go ahead and put your answers in. Okay, so patient one A, we have a few for ultrasound. Some that have answered both. Okay, okay, so let's look at each of these cases, okay? So in patient one, we see that there is flame-shaped glandular tissue directly behind the nipple, okay? So this is classic gynecomastia. We can diagnose this on the mammogram. We do not need additional imaging. You can offer that patient reassurance, okay? Patient number two, we have a BB in the area of palpable concern. Um, this area, maybe it's flame-shaped. It's definitely not behind the nipple, right? So this is eccentric. It's off to the side. It looks a little bit more dense. Um, the margins are a little bit more convex, making it feel mass-like. We need to look at this under ultrasound. We need to see what um, this finding is. Um, if it looks like glandular tissue or if it looks like a cancer, the ultrasound is going to be uh, our next step in patient number two. And in patient number two, this ended up being a breast cancer. So let's go over these, the algorithm for male breast patients that have a palpable breast mass. Okay, so any age male patient, if they have a palpable finding that on clinical exam is consistent with gynecomastia um, and their symptoms are consistent with gynecomastia, they do not need any further imaging. Okay, so that's up to the clinician. Um, oftentimes we will still see those patients because they want confirmation. If you have a patient that is less than 25 that's coming in and um, 
they want to figure out what's going on with the area of palpable concern, start with an ultrasound. If you have a male that's 25 and above with a palpable abnormality, start with a bilateral mammogram. Again, you want to compare uh, both breasts to each other, um, see if the finding is asymmetric or if it's happening in both breasts. Um, and depending on the mammogram, if it looks like gynecomastia, you're done. The patient is given a BIRADS 2 They need to follow up with their doctor to figure out if this is physiologic or if it's secondary to uh, medication or something else going on in the body. If the bilateral mammogram uh, shows a suspicious finding or something that's indeterminate, you need to get an ultrasound um, in those patients, okay? Um, and the caveat here is if a male patient comes in that has um, a suspicious clinical exam, um, whether it's a breast mass or a nipple discharge or rejection, any suspicious findings like that, it does not matter on the age, you're gonna go ahead and get a bilateral mammogram and targeted ultrasound. Um, I would like to add that if you, uh, when you're doing ultrasound, especially in cases of uh, gynecomastia, the technologist will sometimes compare to the retroareolar uh, breast on the other side just to see uh, the differences in the tissue, okay? Okay. So we are on the key concepts um, slide, but I do want to address, I'm going to go back and address with our pregnant patient. Um, I was asked, would you even get a mammogram if it is first trimester in somebody that is pregnant? And the answer is yes. If the ultrasound uh, is highly suspicious, you can go ahead and get the mammogram. Uh, the radiation risk is uh, minimal. The fetus, uh, the amount of radiation that gets to the fetus is again negligible uh, and you can use the lead shield. So if you have a highly suspicious finding, go ahead and get the mammogram. So let's go ahead and go over our key concepts from our talk because I know that we covered quite a bit of information, okay? So first and foremost, ultrasound is gonna be your initial imaging modality of choice. If you have women that are less than 30, if they are pregnant or lactating, or if you have a man that is less than 25, okay? You're gonna start with a mammogram if uh, the patient is 40 and above or if, the, uh, or if the man is 25 and greater. You wanna start, go ahead and start with a mammogram. Uh, in men, it's gonna be bilateral. In women, it's gonna be bilateral or unilateral depending on when their last screening uh, mammogram was. And if it's their baseline study, you always get a bilateral study. Uh, women between 30 and 39, you're going to start with an ultrasound or mammogram, depending on um, your suspicion or just where you practice. Uh, every institution just practices slightly differently, so it depends on the institution and your level of suspicion. Again, if you have a highly suspicious breast mass on palpation, that should be, re that should be biopsied regardless of what you see on the imaging study. So if it's highly suspicious, and the imaging uh, mammogram and ultrasound is negative, you just see dense breast, dense breast tissue, you need to refer that patient to a breast surgeon so they can get a biopsy under palpation. Um, if you have a negative mammogram and ultrasound in a patient that has low clinical suspicion, their workup is done. You don't need to recommend any further imaging studies. Um, you can reassure them that everything is normal and they can follow up with their clinician uh, on the next steps in management. Again, MRI has little utility in the workup of palpable breast masses. You really need to start out with the basics of uh, mammogram and ultrasound first, okay? So thank you so much uh, for spending this time with me. I hope that I was able to provide a little bit more clarity uh, on the imaging workup of palpable breast masses. Um, I know there's quite a bit of confusion uh, out there regarding this. Again, uh, there are things that are institution and practice specific. Um, but as long as you make sure that you are working up the patient appropriately, um, you're going to provide them with the best care. Okay, so feel free to um, reach out to me. Uh, this is my email address. I'm also on Twitter. Um, if you have any questions or comments, um, I can address those too. I see we have quite a few. So um, I'm going to start out with uh, Rafi says, how often do you do an ultrasound under uh, PAL patient and have them come back positive. Okay, so the majority of cases are going to be negative. Um, I would say 80% 80, 80 are going to be negative. I'm just throwing out a number. Um, to ha Or having like a benign finding such as a cyst. Um, 
majority of findings are going to be uh, benign. So you're only gonna have a handful that come back positive. But when somebody comes in with a, pop, with a palpable, you do need to be a little bit more um, vigilant on looking at the imaging studies and especially on your ultrasound. Again, when somebody comes with a palpable, you need to go in there and go in the room, examine the patient and scan them yourself. You can't just have the technologist scan and give you the pictures. You need to check the patient yourself, okay? Let's see. Next question by Sonica is, what is the role of ultrasound guided fine needle aspiration versus core biopsy? So um, if you have the ability to do a core biopsy with a larger gauge um, ultrasound needle, that's gonna be your preference because it gives you more tissue. It's easier for the pathologist to understand what's going on. Um, you're only gonna do a fine needle aspiration if it's something that is very, very hard to reach or say somebody has implants and you don't wanna rupture the implants and, and the finding is very close to the implant, okay? Okay, so when do you do breast MRI? So with palpable breast masses, uh, Arjun asks, when do you do breast MRI? So that really has little utility. Um, you're gonna start with the imaging first, mammogram and ultrasound if it's negative. Um, you're gonna have them see the breast surgeon and have a biopsy under palpation if it's something that is very suspicious. Um, and then they can go for the, from there. If it's something positive, they can get an MRI afterwards. Occasionally you will get an MRI when the mammogram and ultrasound is negative. Um, again, if somebody has fatty tissue or even scattered, um, the positive predictive value for mammogram and ultrasound is really high. So the MRI won't provide as much information. Let's see. Uh, Samir Kumar asks, if a breast lipoma is diagnosed only when seen in the mammary zone on ultrasound as against to subcutaneous lipomas seen in disease, you know, I think if you see a lipoma on ultrasound, um, you shouldn't be worried. So either it's gonna be well demarcated, has a thin rim, it looks like the fat tissue, um, you see it on, on your mammogram that's uh, by reds to benign. Sometimes you see these um, small echogenic areas inside fat lobules that people are calling uh, lipomas. Those are also non-worrisome. Um, I'm not for sure if that's what you are referring to, um, but that's my take. Uh, Jose says, again, when do you suggest MRI? Again, MRI has little utility. We need to do the initial workup on uh, mammogram and ultrasound. Again, if the clinical suspicion is high and the workup is negative, uh, have them see a breast surgeon, have a biopsy under palpation. Um, they even may recommend an MRI at that point, uh, but the studies have shown that the MRI isn't as helpful in these cases. Okay, so Evelyn says, why do we request mammogram for a male above 25 while women above 40? Um, that is a great question. I am using the um, ACR appropriateness criteria, and um, that is the guidelines that they have used. I know male breast cancer is very rare, um, but that is a good question that I would have to look into. I do not know why there is such a age discrepancy. Um, I would have to assume that sometimes if you just do an ultrasound, that gynecomastia isn't always clear and it can look suspicious. But if you get a mammogram, it is diagnostic of gynecomastia and you could be done with the workup at that time. So um, Jacqueline asks, are there any challenging challenges in imaging women with breast implants? Yes, so some of the challenges, just getting a screening exam, um, depending on where the implant is. So some women have implants that are um, in front of the pectoralis muscle and some have them where they're behind the pectoralis muscle. So um, when they get a mammogram, you have a regular view where you can see the implant as well as the glandular tissue. And then the technologist also gets an implant displaced view. So when you try to move that implant out of place and get a picture of the remainder of the tissue, you lose quite a bit of tissue uh, on imaging. So you're not seeing everything on the mammogram just because of how the implants are positioned, okay? Um, on ultrasound, um, you can see more of the tissue. So it's not, um, you really don't miss out on seeing the parenchyma per se with ultrasound because you can see it all the way to the implant. Um, and the only other challenge 
with breast implants are if you have a finding that needs biopsied and it's very close to the implant, or if you see calcifications only on one view in, on the mammogram in somebody that has implants because on the other view, it's just obscured by the implant. So sometimes um, biopsies can be very challenging and you have to troubleshoot um, to figure out how to get a tissue sample when you need them in patients with implants. Are there um, any other questions? Oh, any other questions? Um, let's see, a 40 year old male patient. Samir Kaur asks 40 year old male patient with unilateral painful lump, palpable with inflammation signs. Okay, again, 40 year old, you're going to um, go ahead and do a mammogram and then you're gonna get an ultrasound, right? So you wanna make sure if something, if somebody has a painful breast lump, again, that might be gynecomastia, it can be painful, especially early on, uh, but if they have signs of inflammation, you're gonna be worried about an underlying infection or abscess. So uh, go ahead and get the mammogram first and then you go ahead and get the ultrasound. Um, let's see. Um, somebody else asked, where would you place, uh, when you, uh, let's see, uh, maybe somebody can respond. Victor, and I think somebody else had asked about FNAC. Do you mean fine needle aspiration core biopsy or uh, when you're just using a needle and you're moving it up and down, do you get cell slot, get to get uh, cells and then make slides? Is that what you're referring to? Uh, because if so, again, if you can biopsy something uh, using um, a larger gauge uh, core biopsy device on ultrasound versus doing a fine needle aspiration, that is gonna be the preference uh, to do that just because you can uh, take less passes and get more tissue um, for the patient. Uh, for example, I often use a 12 gauge biopsy device. I can get two, uh, two good samples and be done. Um, if I use an 18 gauge biopsy device, um, I'm going to be getting four to five samples to make sure that the pathologist has enough to give us a good answer. Let's see. Um, okay, so Samir Kumar asked, in the local staging of breast cancer, how reliable is internal mammary screening with ultrasound? So there are some institutions that will look at the internal mammary lymph nodes. Um, that is not something that we look at routinely because even if we see it, we have to figure out how you're gonna biopsy it. So if you are trying to stage for breast cancer, um, it is nice to get a breast MRI if it is not possible, depending on uh, your institution or if the patient cannot uh, get the MRI, um, you could try to look on ultrasound, but it's not um, a commonly used method of looking at the internal mammary lymph nodes. Again, I do know some institutions and some people that will look at the internal mammary lymph nodes. Um, somebody asked if I like using the auto Biorad software um, machines, and I'm not familiar with that. Um, and I am not, I do not use elastography, so I cannot answer those questions. And uh, somebody asked, do you recommend MRI for Biorad's three findings? No. So if I'm saying BIRADS 3, I'm saying that it's probably benign and it has a less than 3% chance of having cancer, uh, so of being cancer, so I'm not going to recommend an MRI. So an MRI, I will recommend if um, this is outside of the palpable workup, I will recommend an MRI if the imaging, uh, basically if I need more information and in the imaging that I have done isn't very helpful. Um, also, some people will, in the palpable setting. Some people may recommend an MRI if somebody uh, has a surgical scar and they're having a tough time telling the difference between a uh, scar and maybe a cancer. So uh, sometimes that is occasionally used in those settings. Uh, another question, what is the next step in focal mastitis? Um, how to follow when you see redness of the skin, but no definite mass. Okay, so if you see redness of the skin, and you don't see uh, collection or phlegmon or in inflammatory changes underneath, that's just gonna, how you, that's gonna be how you report it. And you're gonna recommend that they get follow-up with their clinician and they can determine you know, antibiotic therapy and whatnot. Um, usually I recommend ultrasound follow-up in cases where I see a collection or a small collection on ultrasound such as abscess. Um, I will recommend follow-up after completion of antibiotic therapy or after the resolution of symptoms, because I want to make sure that we were not missing 
um, an underlying mass in that area that was obscured by the abscess or inflammation. Um, so patients with breast augmentation and implants, the workup is gonna be the same um, depending on their age. You're gonna use the same protocols. Um, So um, Aditi asked if, would you do an MRI if the mammo and ultrasound is negative and they have a persistent, um, persistent non-palpable breast complaint, such as tenderness, vague, uneasiness, heaviness? Um, usually not. Um, some clinicians will get a breast MRI, but if the mammogram and ultrasound has been negative um, and it is a non-palpable finding, um, it's usually not a criteria to get breast MRI. Um, that being said, I have seen orders for breast MRI in uh, such cases. Uh, and most of the time the findings are, are negative. Um, when you're practicing breast imaging, you will soon realize that you see patients often that have uh, breast pain and um, other symptoms such as uneasiness or heaviness or even um, sharp pains. And the good news is we don't see anything uh, on imaging, whether it's mammogram or ultrasound. Um, but we also don't have an explanation for uh, why they're having those symptoms. And that is fairly common uh, in breast imaging. Okay, so. Um, okay, so somebody is asking, after how many repeated aspirations of the same cyst do you recommend surgical removal of cyst? If something looks like a cyst, um, I would just leave it alone unless it is symptomatic for the patient. So, um, so the issues with cysts are even if you aspirate them, it's like a balloon. Unless you take a chunk out of that wall, it can fill up again. So um, I don't recommend surgical removal unless it is just so symptomatic and intolerable for the patient that they would need to have it removed. Okay, because surgery itself also has um, some side effects and causes changes on your mammogram and imaging. So, um, um, oh, I think I might have gone over the questions again. Let me see if there are any more. Uh, can I, oh, this is a great question. So Eric asked uh, from Ghana, can a biopsy be done in a lactating mother with a palpable lump? So yes, uh, biopsy can be done. Um, I just did one um, this week, uh, but there are a few things that you need to keep in mind when you do a biopsy in a lactating patient. So um, the biggest is you wanna use the smallest gauge needle uh, possible because there is a small, 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 small risk for a milk fistula to develop to the skin along the biopsy tract. So again, like I said, I usually use 12 gauge biopsies, uh, 12 gauge needles when I do biopsies. In these cases, I will opt for an 18 gauge needle and I'll just do a few more cores but it is not a problem if they are lactating. Um, let's see, Rebecca asked for women with regular medical breast checkup between 30 and 40, what is the imaging recommendation? So if somebody, um, Rebecca, I'm not for sure if, if, let's go over this. So if somebody is between 30 and 40 and they have no symptoms and they get a breast check and it's normal uh, and they have no, if they're, they're not greater than 20% risk of um, having a lifetime risk of breast cancer, they start a uh, mammogram at age 40. Uh, that's what we recommend through the American College of Radiology and Society of Breast Imaging. Uh, if uh, somebody is between the ages of 30, 40, and on their regular medical exam, uh, the doctor palpates an area of uh, concern, then you're gonna go through the algorithm of starting either with a mammogram or ultrasound first. Um, And Rebecca, if I didn't answer that question or, or if it's still unclear, please uh, send me a message. Okay. And Any answer uh, questions can also be sent to your email, right, doctor? Oh yes, and, and also to my email. Okay, so, um, so oh, uh, great question. I think Begum, if I said that correctly, said how do you evaluate axillary lymph nodes or when do you evaluate? Um, so whenever I find, find um, 
if I'm suspicious of cancer, whether on ultrasound or mammogram, um, I'm gonna have them look in the, uh, in the axilla on ultrasound. Um, Hansa asked, what is the role of tomosynthesis? Um, we do tomosynthesis on all our patients. So if you have that ability, um, I would always just do, go ahead and get tomosynthesis uh, when you're doing mammography. Uh, Hansa also asked, can a lesion be seen on ultrasound and not on mammography? Yes. That is why it is very important to go ahead and get an ultrasound if somebody has a palpable abnormality and their tissue is not clearly fatty in that location. Okay, Okay. so I think those are most of the questions. Again, if you have any other questions, uh, just shoot me an email. I'm happy to answer as best as I can. Uh, I know there are quite a few questions on elastography. I don't use that in my practice, so I wouldn't be able to comment on that. Well, thank you, Dr. Chef, for the excellent presentation. It was highly informative and very interactive. We're all very immensely grateful for you for doing this and for our mission of advocating for medical education throughout the world. Unfortunately, Dr. Rahani had to leave to the hospital for a procedure, but she wanted to let me know how grateful she was. Okay. Now, for our audience, thank you for joining us, and I hope you can join us next time. Okay. Thanks, everybody.